We're now on part 4 on this course where we're building a quiz app with AngularJS and in this part we're going to take a look at fixing up some of the little CSS issues that we had in the previous video with the image sizing and then we're going to create the markup for the pop-up modal and then we're going to populate that with some data. So in this video the first thing we're going to tackle is just adding some custom CSS to each of these images to just make sure that they're all the same height because right now they're all just varying heights and it doesn't quite look correct. So we'll head back into our HTML and here's our image in our ng repeat and we'll just add in a class that we can hook onto to style. So we'll call it well image and then we'll open up the CSS and we'll create a rule for well image and we'll give it a width of 100% and a height of 162 pixels. So you can give it whatever height you want. I've just found through trial and error that 162 pixels looks about right. So we'll close out the CSS and go back into the browser. And now we can see each of these images is the same height and it looks right. So now what we want to do is add some functionality to these buttons. So right now I click them and nothing happens. But if we go into the final application, when I click, this modal pops up and is populated with information for the turtle that I clicked on. So I click on the Hawksbill and this is populated with Hawksbill information. So we want to be able to pop up that modal and then populate the modal with information for the turtle we clicked on. So if we head back into the HTML, we come down to the button, we want to add on a few attributes for Bootstrap just to tell Bootstrap that this button is triggering a modal. So we want to give it a data toggle equals modal attribute and then also a data target which will let it know exactly what modal we want it to pop up and here we pass in an ID of the modal. So we haven't created the modal yet, but when we do, we'll give it the ID of turtle-info. And then Bootstrap will know that's the modal that we want to pop up when we press this button. And now we want to add in a directive from Angular called ng-click. And the ng-click directive obviously triggers when that particular element is clicked. And what we want to do is when we click it, we want Angular to figure out what turtle we've just clicked on and then take the information for that turtle, so the image and the title and all of this information from the JSON and set that aside for us. So then we can populate this modal with that information. So effectively, we want to create an active turtle. So it's the turtle that's currently active. It's the turtle that we've clicked on. So here the loggerhead is active. Here the Camp Ridley is active, etc. So we want to create an active turtle. So if we come back into here, we'll add in the ng click equals. And then we want to trigger a function. And that function will be on our controller. So it'll be on our list controller. So list dot and we'll call the function change active turtle and then into that we'll pass an argument and that argument will be turtle so if you remember turtle is what we're using to reference the current iteration of ng repeat and the great thing about angular is that is still active that turtle, we can still reference that turtle and it will still reference that particular iteration of ng-repeat. So it's not like a for loop where this turtle will change on every iteration and once the for loop's complete, we don't have reference to the first iteration or the second iteration. It's finished. But with Angular, we do. So we can still say turtle, even though this is all populated, if we say turtle, this turtle will equal the JSON for the green turtle and turtle here will equal the JSON for the loggerhead and here for the leatherback and that will be true for the life of the application. We can always still have access to that turtle alias within our ng-repeat 
and it will still give us back the data that is on that iteration. So we pass in turtle. So now if we just save this and head into our controller, I can now create the variable for active turtle. So that will be an object that will hold the object of the currently active turtle, which is so for green turtle, if green turtle was active, it would hold the type, the image URL, location, size, lifespan, etc. So we want to create that object. So we'll call it active turtle. And we'll just set this equal to a, an empty object. And now we want to create the function, which we called change active turtle. And now you could have an anonymous function here, that would be fine. But what we're going to do is stick with our explicit declarations and not list change active turtle. So that references a function that we can then create down here. Ah, keep typing list change active turtle. And we're just keeping things a bit more explicit. And then of course, we passed in an argument. So we'll call that argument index because it's the current index of the ng repeat. And then all we want to do inside here is set the active turtle to the information that's held in the current index of the ng repeat. So that's as simple as saying vm dot active turtle equals and then just say index. So now what's happening is every time we click this button, it's going to trigger this function and into this function, we're passing the data of the turtle that we clicked on or the object from the current iteration of the ng repeat. So this is going to be an object that holds type and location and all of that data. And then this is the function itself and that data that we're passing into the function is just going to be set to active turtle. So then this active turtle is no longer going to be a blank object. It's going to be an object that holds the information of the currently active turtle. So I hope that makes a bit of sense. So now what we can do is when this modal triggers, so we click this button and it's going to trigger the modal and then we're going to have an active turtle. So then we can use that active turtle inside the modal to print out the information for that particular turtle. So we can have one modal that will be be capable of printing out the data for every turtle in our application, rather than creating multiple different modals. So we'll come down here and we'll start creating the modal. So we'll start off with some some housekeeping for bootstrap. So we'll give a class of modal and then we'll give it an ID. So remember, we gave it the ID of turtle dash info. So we need to keep that ID there. And then we want to give it a modal dialogue class. Dialogue. And then a modal content. I uh, can't type modal content. So that's just some housekeeping for bootstrap. And then we'll start off by giving a, a modal header. And then inside here, we'll have an H2. And then we'll use our angular binding. And then here we'll say list dot, because we're still inside our list controller, which is up here. So we're still inside that. So we can say list dot. And now here we can use active turtle. So list.activeTurtle, and then this is going to be the, the name of the turtle, so the type. So then we can say dot type. So we're referencing the active turtle, which is an object inside the list controller, and it will be equal to one of these objects. So we can reference type, and it will display there just nicely. And now we will create the modal body. So that's here, modal body. And then here we'll just split it into a bootstrap row. 
and we'll make this so we want to make this a bit responsive so we'll give it a call on all sizes of eight and then we'll give it an offset so we don't want it to be off to the side so if we just say call xs8 it'll take up eight eight columns of the 12 but it'll always be left aligned so we want to just offset it slightly so we'll give it a call xs oh not a dot call xs offset 2 so obviously we've got eight columns, so there's four spare. So if we offset it by two, these eight columns will be centered. And then in here we can add the image. Again, we'll give it an ng source. So this is just a repeat of what we did the last time, but then we use the active turtle this time and we give it image URL. Then again, we can delete the alt tag and we'll give it a class again of ng rounded and image responsive, just like we did before. And then we'll create another row below this. And this is where we'll put our information in. So I'll just hop back in to give you a bit more context so I'll pop the modal up so this was our header and this is the image so this is what we made eight columns across and then offset it by two and then now we're going to create this area here so we're making a row and then we're going to put all of this information in so this is our row here and then we're going to make this div and we'll give it a call md6 and then into here we want our p strong locations so this is exactly the same as we did before and then we do the binding but of course here we're using active turtle again and then dot locations so now hopefully we will have a modal. So we'll close this and we'll go into this version. So now hopefully if we click on this, we have the green turtle, we have the image, and we have all of the information. So this is a bit too close to this image, so I'd like to add some CSS just to move that down a bit. So we'll do that now quickly. So this is on this row, this row. So we'll just call it top buffer. Save and then open up the CSS. Top buffer. And then we'll give it a margin top of say 30 pixels. Close that out, come back into the browser. Click the modal again, and there you go. It's just pushed it down a bit. So that's nice there. So now we just want to add in the description down below, and we'll be good. So then just create a div. In fact, we'll give this div a class of top buffer as well, just to bring it down off from the, the other information. And then in here, we'll just give it a paragraph tag, list.activeTurtle.description. So again, this description is coming from this JSON, and it's just here. So now if we come back into the browser, click on here, and that's all off to the side. And that is because we never give it a bootstrap class. So we'll just give it a bootstrap class here of call xs12 
back into the browser and there we go we've got that and we've got our nice description so now we just need to add in our close button so we'll add that below here button we'll call it close we'll give it the class of button and button danger and pull right because we want it on the right hand side and then we'll also give it the bootstrap attribute of data dismiss equals modal and we'll just stick this on another line to make it a bit easier to read so now when we click that it will dismiss the modal so we can do that and we've got that down here close and it dismisses it good so that's all for this video so in the next video we're going to take a look at implementing the search functionality that we have up at the top which is here so we can search for green turtle and it will automatically update all of this so that's what we'll do in the next video for those of you that haven't checked out my website yet i do a full article write-up for every single video that i put out on youtube and that will include code snippets and other little things that will help you along the link to the write-up for the current video is on the bottom left of the screen and if you just want to continue watching this video series then just click the link in the center of the screen and we'll get started with the next video